Uh, we have, we're very excited to have Michelle Schweber here with us to be presenting. She is currently at the Georgia for Center for Puppetry Arts, but she's been just successful as a fundraiser for a really long time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do her uh, service in, in presenting herself. She'll, uh, she'll come on video and, and share a little bit about her, but we're super excited to have her. Um, she's been very successful in finding matching grants, and we thought that this was a very important topic for us coming up with Georgia Gives, which is coming up sooner than later. Um, so um, us here at GCN and at the Georgia Gives team is really excited to have her. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you, Michelle. Thanks for joining. Oh, wait, I need to, um, we need to unmute you. Just one second. Let's see if Emily, Emily, do you, do you, oh, there we go. All right, Michelle, sorry about that. Without further ado, the floor is yours. No, that's great. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining today. Um, my name is Michelle Schweber, and I'd love for you all to find me on LinkedIn. I'm actually under Michelle Profont Schweber. Um, I just think it's a great way to stay connected um, as we all stay um, uh, excited through this whole uh, COVID endeavor. So um, I have been in fundraising for, oh my gosh, I think over 30 years. Um, I originally came from Sarasota, Florida. So I've worked at a botanical garden, a children's museum. Um, I went down to the Naples area, worked at the American Heart Association as the executive director for six years and just had a really amazing career. My husband got transferred, he's with Comcast here, like 10 or 11 years ago. And seriously, we thought it was gonna be like a two year stint. Well, we've been here 11 years. I have a 15 year old daughter. And um, I went over and worked at the Woodruff Art Center. I was over at Girl Scouts for about six years. And now I work as a consultant for the Georgia Center for Nonprofits, but also um, my main gig is at uh, the Center for Puppetry Arts. So you'll hear a lot um, about the Center for Puppetry Arts today. Um, I also want to share that I'm a proud uh, returned Peace Corps volunteer. I was, uh, I served as a nonprofit, it's called an NGO consultant in uh, Romania. And I worked with a gypsy village and an orphanage. So it was a long time ago, a long, long, long time ago, 1996 to 1998. But you never know, there could be another RP, uh, Return Peace Corps volunteer on the call. And it's always fun um, to make that connection. So today, um, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about mage, uh, matching gifts. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we double the donation. So. Um, I think we can move to the next slide. Thank you. So what is a matching grant? How does it work? Where does it come from? And why do donors care? Um, a matching grant is basically a pot of money and it's intended to encourage and incentivize members of the community to donate to an organization and hopefully your organization. Sometimes you'll hear the term matching grant and you'll also hear the term challenge grant, and they are a little bit different. So in a matching grant, you receive the money for every dollar you raise. Um, for a challenge grant, you only receive the match if you've raised all the money. So I'm gonna give you an example because maybe that's a little bit confusing. Um, like I said, I used to work at Marie Selby Botanical Garden. If you haven't been, it's absolutely gorgeous on Sarasota Bay. Um, and we wanted to raise a million dollars to restore a building on the property. So we had a foundation that said, hey, I would love to give you $500,000, but the stipulation is it's gonna be a challenge grant. So that meant that we needed to raise $500,000 before they gave us their $500,000. So if we didn't raise the 500,000, then we wouldn't get their 500,000. So there's a, it's exciting if you actually get it, but it, it, it can be difficult if you don't have the prospects in your pipeline. Now, I am a big fan of matching grants and it's a little bit different. And so we're gonna just pretty much stay basic. So, um, and you've probably seen this out in the community. 
Um, a matching grant is um, typically a one-to-one -one match. So for every dollar you raise, your donation gets matched up to a certain amount. So let's say on that Marie Selby Botanical Garden um, idea, we could only raise $400,000. Well, in the last example, we never would have gotten the $500,000 and we'd only raise $400,000 for the project. But in the matching grant, you actually get the match one-to-one -one ratio, so you would actually raise $800,000. So for me, I like it, I think it's exciting, and I really encourage it. Um, so why do organizations or individuals or foundations issue a matching grant in the first place? I think sometimes they wanna make sure that they're not the only donor that's given to the cause, right? They wanna make sure that they are a, a catalyst and they're part of a, of a, of a group. So they want to ensure they are not only the donor. They're, they're they they want to ensure that they are not the only donor of the project, um, but they also basically want to help build momentum. And it is exciting when you're in a matching grant um, program or a matching grant campaign. It is just exciting. So throughout our discussion today, I want to talk a lot about matching grants. Um, and also talk about how you can leverage them for Georgia Gives Day. So if you don't know about Georgia Gives Day, um, it is our local Giving Tuesday. It's a day that um, of giving that happens the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So that's December 1st of this year. And I think we can flip to the next slide. I don't necessarily know if we put it on there, we might have, um, but the, uh, are you guys, Oh, yep, you're there. I'm just making sure it wasn't frozen. Um, so because today is September 1st, uh, we actually have 90 days to Georgia Gives Day. So we have plenty of time. So we can build a plan, build a timeline. We have plenty of time. And I'm excited about um, talking about um, matching grants uh, towards that end. So how does a matching grant work? Next slide. Um, first, you'll need to find a project that you think is really exciting, not your coworkers, not your executive director, but you have to be fired up about it because if you can't sell it, no one else can, okay? So get, get a, make sure you have a project that's really exciting and you can get some traction and determine how much it'll cost. So I took some examples um, from other campaigns that were on um, Giving Tuesday Now. Um, one of them was purchase 50 STEM science kits for our after school program so underserved girls can learn to code. Another one was the care and feeding of 50 puppies for the month of December to make sure they are healthy and their shots are up to date when they get adopted. Oh, how cute is that? And this other one, it just kind of um, talked to me, help fund service dogs for veterans. And think about when you're actually doing the project, the different levels underneath it. So if people are giving, are they gonna give 25 bucks, 50, 100, 250, 1,000, know, what will that do? So $25, for example, if we're using the Veterans Project, could provide a leash and collar. $50 by six months of, I don't know, flea medicine. Um, $75 could uh, get a doggy vest and $100 buys vaccine. So really, I like to keep it around five different levels, but you have to be really um, conscious about what you actually think those levels are that people are going to donate. Because, I mean, you can put levels of $10,000, $25,000, $50,000 in there, but I mean, is that really going to happen? So put levels that you feel like your donor base or your prospect pool can actually get. So I say five levels, sometimes I use seven. So I would do uh, 25, 50, 75, and 100, but I'd also stick in a 250, 500, and 1,000, because sometimes I'm surprised. Uh, we'll, we'll get uh, a $1,000 donor that you didn't even think of um, that's doing it. And, and a lot of times, um, they're actually the people that are closest to the organization, their staff members. So um, know your market. Um, so now you have your project. It's exciting, you know your levels, and you know pretty much how much it's gonna cost. If it's gonna be a $5,000 project, a $10,000 project, but what you're gonna to need to do next is you're gonna really need to put a time frame to it and figure out when does the project start, 
which, you know, we just talked about 90 days. It's probably going to start today. <laughs> um, and when does it end? So what I like to do to make sure I'm in keeps with accounting is make sure it ends by your fiscal year. So some people's fiscal year is their calendar year, and that's the end of this month or end of December, December 31st. But for example, where I'm at now, the Center for Puppetry Arts, the end of our fiscal year is June. So they're really going to want to, um, uh, you're going to really want to make sure you stay in the fiscal area. It's just the easiest way to do it. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to work on identifying donors to help meet the match. And you're going to set the parameters of, of the way it works. So I wouldn't make it too complicated. The best way to do it is just keep it easy, one to one dollar match. Um, you can say if you want, um, anybody uh, who upgrades can get a match, um, if it can be a new donor. But I just like to say a, a one to one match um, from, the, from a specific time frame when it comes in. That's the easiest way and everybody um, can play. Um, so for every dollar you raise, um, the match will actually match it dollar for dollar up to the maximum amount. So let's say that you were um, at, um, you, let, let's say that you wanted to create a match and you realized that your matching grant donor you wanted to secure was $2,500. The most that you're really going to get from your matching grant donor actually is the $2,500. So don't think you're going to get $3,000 or $5,000. Just know that whatever you ask and, and um, secure is the, is the maximum amount that you're going to get. I say that because people think that they can go back um, sometimes because let's say you go over your match and you raise four thousand dollars off of your twenty five hundred dollar campaign. I mean, if you're lucky, the the donor might give give you the money, but I don't want you to ever create that as an expectation. That's really really important. So where does it come from? Um, the best place to start is to get a match from your most loyal donors. Look at all your records of your upper level givers from the previous years and target. I don't know, two or three people that you want to start. Um, if you guys are familiar with fundraising terminology, there's Libunt and Cybunt. Libunt means last year, but unfortunately not yet this year. And Cybunt is some year, but unfortunately not yet this year. I wouldn't work on the Cybunt list. Um, I would actually work on your Libunt list and really find the people that are really close. Board members are great. Um, and again, my advice, at the onset is don't put too many restrictions on the donation. Try to make it as open-ended as possible and really work with your finance team on the language to make sure that uh, you're not creating your, you're not setting yourself up to creating a, a restricted gift, um, that it's, it's really an, as much of an unrestricted gift as possible. Um, uh, why do matching donors care? Um, a, a matching grant donor will help because it makes them feel good inside. Um, oh, recently, we had a, a, a donor who um, gives an annual gift, but nothing really significant. It, it's more, oh, it, is, oh, it is significant, don't get me wrong, but it, it wasn't as significant as the match that she gave. And um, we really talked about the project that we were doing and you could tell that she really, really cared, but she didn't want to go all in by herself. So she created a match because then she could get others to come along and it just made her feel amazing inside and it really helps connect you um, to some incredible donors um, around around your organization in a much deeper way. So um, if you think of people that are really passionate, that really love the organization, you, you can have conversations with them and hopefully they can get on board with the, the, the project that, um, th that you're trying to raise funds for. Um, the other reason is because you asked. So uh, matching gift donors, um, don't get asked to become matching gift donors a lot. So uh, think about a couple of targeted people and it, it could be the first time that they've ever done it. So it's, it's, um, it's, 
it, it's kind of fun on both sides. It's fun for you going and making the ask and working together um, and kind of creating this, this new idea. And it's exciting when you're in the middle of it all. And the most exciting is when you win, right? When you, when you get the money that you want. So remember to, to make sure you have a project that is exciting even if it's not that exciting because you know you have to do it, get your best writers and brains around the table to make it exciting. Um, you have to get really fired up about it. Um, when you tell donors that their gifts can actually be doubled, it shows that you're looking into every possible way to raise money for the cause and people like that. When we get into some future slides, you'll be amazed, I was amazed at some of the statistics of how much of a difference a matching gift can, can really lend. And it also shows donors that you care about their contributions so much that they're willing to show them ways to make their contributions go further. Um, sometimes a matching gift donor uh, can actually be perceived as a hero for an organization. They don't even realize it, but, but at the very end, wow, if it wasn't for them, all this money wouldn't have been raised. So it's, um, it's really, really quite, quite um, fun, if you will. I think we can go to the next slide. Oh, we are doing the group poll. All right, so I'd like to get a little feel of who's on the call today, and I'm sure you guys would like to as well. I mean, are, is it really everybody's looking for $100,000 matching gift donors? Are we looking for $1,000 matching gift donors? I'd love to, to find out. And our amazing GCN team, um, Emily and Louisa, um, are extremely tech savvy, much more tech savvy than me. I mean, I can't even talk to you. I have to put my picture up because I, uh, <laughs> I have to figure this out with all the computer. Um, and help me pull together this poll. So here it goes. Um, think about an upcoming matching gift campaign you would like to launch. Now, it doesn't have to be associated with Georgia Gives Day, but we're going to use that as the example for today. But it could be an annual appeal campaign. It could be a membership campaign, an event campaign, or it could be the Georgia, Ga uh, Georgia Gives Day campaign, which is the 90 days. So the first question, here we go. How big is your organization? This will give us a picture of what size organizations are on this call. Um, the second question is, have you, 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 not any of your team members, organized a matching gift campaign in the past? So when you answer that, I'm asking, have you physically shaped a matching grant campaign and were responsible or managed a team that pulled the list and helped market the organizations to get the match? Remember, all these answers are confidential, so just be honest. I, I can't see it. I wouldn't even know how to see it. <laughs> so just um, let's, let's be as honest as possible. Um, and then have you successfully solicited, solicited a matching grant from a donor? Specifically meaning, have you physically picked up the phone or Zoomed, called a prospect, made the ask, and then received a written commitment? Love to find that out. Um, what size matching gifts do you anticipate soliciting for your next campaign? Um, pick a range that you think you'd have a good chance of getting. And I pick a range that you think that you're going to make an ask for. So don't set it too high and don't send it too low. Um, and uh, let's start the poll. All right, there guys, we go. everybody. Look at that. Very exciting. Yes, feel free to pipe in. <laughs> No, just saying everybody should have a little pop-up that just showed up here. I see it, so hopefully everyone has. Um, and you can um, basically click on the different um, to, to, to do the answers. So I, and we can actually see in real time the uh, answers, so that's exciting. How are we doing on time? We good, ladies? Yeah, I think we can we can do results. I think most people have filled it out. Okay. 
Dun, dun, dun. I'm excited. Oh, this is so cool. I love this. Let's see. So what did we learn? How big is your organization? So we have one, well, you say almost one third of the organizations on the call are um, under 300,000 and one third are over. So there's little ones, littler ones and big ones. So that is fascinating. And actually it's basically one third, one third, one third. You know, we can group, group that middle. Fascinating. Okay. Um, has your organization, have you organized a matching gift in the past? Okay, it's good. So this is great feedback. I didn't know, you know, who I would actually be talking to. So 70% of you on the call um, would like to learn just a little bit more of how to do it. Have you successfully solicited a matching grant from a donor? Um, 86% no. Don't worry, you will. It's all about a phone call. Let's see, what size matching gift do you anticipate soliciting for your next campaign? Ooh, look at that, up to $10,000. That is exciting, over $10,000. So 20, that's, yep, a little bit over, a little bit less than half of up to or over $10,000. That's awesome. Okay, this is great. Great, great, great feedback. All right, well, let's see where we kind of um, landed also um, with national statistics. Um, uh, I think it's great to, to look at and understand who's on the call. That way it, it gives you um, some relational um, pieces. But um, as far as national statistics, what is actually going on around the country? Um, I found some amazing statistics. Um, now, today we're really talking about a matching gift donor. That's the bigger person, not necessarily the, the little guys, but the matching gift donor. But I also wanna remind you that there are tons and tons of corporations around the country that match their employee gifts too. So if you don't know about that or don't have um, a matching gift employee program um, in your in your development office, you'll want to look at that. At least, if nothing else, do the do the guys that are here um, in the Atlanta area. You know, Coca Cola, UPS, um, Home Depot, anybody, any of the big ones that are in the local uh, the local area. That'll really help you, um, because theoretically, if you can find those folks, your matching gift donor the big one can match their gift and then the corporation can match the donor's gift. So sometimes they just need a general reminder and you can just make lots and lots of money. It's really, really exciting. Um, so in a review of Give Big Data, so that's the name of the website, Give Big Data, um, as well as fundraising research shows that nonprofits are more successful when using matching funds from a donor or donors to fuel online giving. So ding, 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 did you hear that? They are more successful. According to the Big Give Research Initiative, and I love this statistic, it's amazing. And you can use this with all your board members and your executive directors. 84% of survey participants reveal that they are more likely to donate if a match was offered. Isn't that amazing? So you send out, and I call them spray and praise, you send out some uh, uh, appeals, your annual appeals at the end of the year, you're hoping, 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 hopefully you've got your board members signing and, and making the call, but, uh, or signing the letters and, and then placing calls in order to get their donors to, to renew. But imagine that, 84%. Um, would would ha have a higher propensity of, 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 of giving more if there's a match. So I, I think that's just good knowledge. Um, I also landed on some facts on the power of matching funds online, and here's what I found. So match funding is the most likely factor to make donors give more. Match funding even scored higher than emergency appeal. So if you think about writing a letter because of the coronavirus affecting your organization and believe that an emergency is going to sell, I think again, think about matching gifts. 
Um, when a match is offered, one out of three donors indicates they gave a bigger gift because matching was applied to their donation. Um, just simply mentioning matching gifts in fundraising appeals, so letter writing campaigns, either by snail mail or uh, digitally, like email, result in a 71% increase in the response rate and a 51% increase in the average donation amount. Super cool. And matching funds of any size can incentivize donors to make a gift or increase their gift in order to help the organization maximize their fundraising efforts. So um, next slide. Uh, so Michelle, you've been talking, you know, but how do I get a matching grant? Yes, 30 minutes into it and here it is. You guys ready? Um, a little earlier, we asked where do matching grants come from? So this is how you do it. Step one, set a target amount for the campaign. So let's say you wanna raise a total of $10,000. You would try to identify a matching grant donor for $5,000. So 5,000 times two is 10,000. Um, step two, be able to clearly articulate your project. I can't even express to you, and uh, you've heard me po keep um, pointing at this, you know, it's got to be exciting. Make it exciting. Get other people to read about the project. It's got to be exciting. What are the funds going to be used for? Um, if we raise the money, what's going to happen? So if you do it, then this will happen. If we don't do it, then this will happen. So those are great, two great ways of, of, of thinking um, when you're actually doing your matching gift. Um, step three, create a prospect list. And I'm talking about the big matching grant again. Find people who are multi-year givers to your organization. So you, you, can, you can pull that in Razor's Edge um, if you have that, that they're passionate and they really wanna help you. So find people that love you and they will help you um, uh, get a matching gift. Um, you probably already knew who they are. So right now, if you close your eyes and you think about, mm, these are three people, write their names down right now and those are gonna be your prospects They're, you're gonna start with. Um, if you are making the ask, they will give the money because they want to help you be successful. Yes, people give to causes and people to give to mission, but ultimately people give to people. Um, so set up a Zoom call and ask. So people will give because you ask. Um, step four, work on your pitch. Remember, positive energy yields positive results. So if you're excited about the project and you can get them excited about it, talk about the need for the project, the, the success of the project, how it would move mountains, and then ask them if they would consider being your matching gift donor and then say nothing. Just wait. Um, we recently had a project at the Center for Puppetry Arts. We were going through COVID. Um, we had a, we had, we, we still have a, uh, a, a digital uh, learning platform. Uh, used to be called, uh, what is it? Used to be uh, distance, Dis it used to be called distance learning. And so we needed to move all of our programs online, but in order to do that, we needed money. So. Uh, initially, we were doing our programs online, but we had a Zoom room and it only had 100 seats, but we were, uh, we needed 1,000 seats. Uh, so this became really exciting and it was perfect because it was right around uh, Georgia Gives Now time. So it became uh, an eminent need, like we have too many people that want to sign into our program. Oh my gosh, we need help to get the Zoom room. Can you, can you help us expand um, the Zoom room? Because as you guys all know, it costs like, three to $5,000 in order to, um, to expand that. So there's, if you can identify a need uh, with quick returns and get people excited about it, um, that, that really helps with your pitch. Step five, if you are successful, um, play it cool and, and, and thank them. So if, if you get a matching grant, like, oh, I'd love to do it. Don't go, oh my God, you did it? Really? I can't believe it. Just play it cool and ask them if they can think of anything, anyone else um, that they, uh, that might want to get involved. It's amazing. Your matching grant donors will help you. I promise you, they will help you get get um, their the match realized. It's they are invested. They love the organization. They believe in you, and they will help. So um, 
uh, make sure to work that. And if you got a no, they're like, no, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do it. Thank them so much for their time and their and, um, understanding and ask them for their advice. Ask them for their, their expertise. Don't just quickly get off the phone call. Just try to keep the conversation going because you don't know, they might not be the matching grant donor, but they might be on the flip side they might be a, a larger donor that um, helps with the match, okay? And then step six, if all of that wasn't successful and it's still a no and you still need a matching grant, um, ask them if they'd be a part of a group. So basically pooling resources. Um, they might feel more comfortable if five other board members participated and they split it. Um, so from the example above, maybe five board members could dig deep and give an additional $1,000 if you made the match. So you effectively have taken $1,000 from five different board members. It's a, it's an, a, a dollar, it's money that's in addition to what they're already giving. It's not necessarily a, 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 the full thing, but they, they pull together and now you've got a nice match. Um, so uh, uh, last Giving Tuesday now, um, we had a uh, big match. I, I, I didn't actually expect it, but we got a big match. We had a $25,000 match. Um, and the donor was extremely excited and she has ties to a foundation. And so she created another match that was much smaller, $5,000, um, to, to match additional gifts towards, uh, uh, what is it, giving, Georgia Gives Day now? Giving Tuesday now? Um, and then we had another board member that wanted to engage our board, our, our staff members. So he said he would match all staff donations up to $3,500. So all of a sudden, within no time, we had three matches. We had 25, 5, 30, like $33,000 worth of, of, of matching grant funding, which, you know, really, really worked out well. Next slide. Um, so how much is enough? Um, we talked earlier about setting the project goal and the budget, how much the project costs to deliver and how much you would need for the match, but ask yourself this question, what does success look, look like? Is success reaching the match? Sometimes I go straight to my PDR goals, those are your performance indicator goals for your, for your, um, for your job, and make sure you're aligning to whatever you're doing here, to, um, because I guarantee you're going to be successful. Um, uh, with some of the, the, the responsibilities that are in your job. Um, if, is it finding new donors to give to the organization? Is it a way to push out your cause in PR and social media? Is it a way of engaging board members or donors who need a little bit of love? Um, make sure you write out a few things that benchmark what success looks like um, to you and your organization. And always keep that in the forefront of your mind. Um, but my best, best, best piece of advice is set realistic goals. So um, quick example, the donor I was talking about for 25,000, she actually said, oh, you know what I should do? I should probably give you 50. I didn't think we could do the 50. I, I, I honestly didn't. So I said, you know what, Let, let's just do 25. So it's true, I left $25,000 on the table, but I, we have such a connection now with the the major gifts donor that I can get that $25,000 a little bit later for, for, for something else. I'm, I'm confident we can do that. So um, it is um, important to set realistic goals. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. I'm going to try to keep it moving. Uh huh. Um, honesty is the best policy. So what counts and what should not. So um, I'm going to give you another piece of advice, and this is it. Everybody write this out. Never, ever, ever count verbals. Got it? Never, ever, ever count verbals. I cannot tell you how many times I have been burned, all right, disappointed, upset, sad, because someone tells me a number that they're going to give towards the match, and when the check comes in, it's a different lowered number, but I do have a solution, right? So we have that it's a little bit of, of a problem, but it's a solution. So if a donor or a board member or a staff member, anybody calls you on the phone and says, hi, I just thought I'd reach out. 
Um, I'm not near my computer, but I wanted to let you know, I'm gonna give you $500 towards the match. This is what you need to say. Oh my gosh, that is great. It is wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I need one more thing from you. Um, I, I, my finance team really needs to make sure that everything's in writing and I'm unable to account anything that's not in writing. So if I send you an email confirming what you just said, can you please just send it back saying approved? Now, let's be honest, cash is king, but sometimes it's great knowing that your matching gift program is working and you can use it as momentum, but you really wanna make sure that all the gifts are recorded online, um, they're solid, uh, you have backup and documentation in order to, um, to get those gifts in and you haven't counted the, you, you have not really counted verbals. You can keep verbals over to a side, but don't put them, with your, your master list um, and counting verbals. Um, why is this important for the matching gift donor? Because you're gonna be communicating with them often. You always wanna talk to them and tell them how great things are going. And you also wanna tell them the truth if it's not going so great, but get excited and explain to them um, how you have mo how, how you, yeah, how you have momentum. And, but how awful would it be at a verbal that you counted on and you got so excited about, and you told them about it, and it didn't transpire. So um, having the gift in writing and letting them know they are, they're, you're working on processing the gift um, is exciting, um, and then you, you have the backup that you need. Um, oh my goodness, three more minutes, keep going. <laughs> okay, uh, next slide. So the day of the uh, event, so, when I thought of day of, I was thinking of Georgia Gives Day. So let's pretend it is Georgia Gives Day. You're fired up. We got social media clicking. We got Facebook posts going. Board members are solic soliciting. Um, you've created a countdown a couple days before. Um, everybody's in the action. Um, GCN's posting. They've got articles that are in the newspaper. You're sharing them. You're, everybody's engaging the board. And most importantly, you're having fun. Um, just keep that going and the momentum is, is great. The next slide. This is not the day, the day after to have anybody on your team take the day off. It happens all the time. Everybody's exhausted. It's the next day. Please, please, please just remember this. Do not have people take the day off um, after the event. What you wanna do is today is the day of closure. Um, you want to send thank you notes, you want to get them out of the way, um, you want to find if you read the, met the match, you're going to call up your major gifts matching donor and be excited about it. Um, any high-end donors uh, will get, you'll ask your board chair to send handwritten thank you notes. Um, you'll make sure that all the donors are on your website and all their names are spelled properly. Um, you will remind everybody it's not too late and uh, uh, that it's the season of giving. And guess what? You're going to check the mail. You're going to check the mail because it blows my mind that you um, still will get gifts in a couple days late. And you can count all of that because you've created your, your timeline, the start and the end timeline. So next slide. Next slide. Okay. Um, what's in it for the donor? Um, there's two parts to the matching grant. There's the grant tour and the donors who give to the match. So make sure you're continuously updating your matching grant donor. You can send outlook reminders on your calendar and all you have to do and what I call it is drip on them. So I, my big donors, I text, I send them handwritten um, pretty cards. So like if it's Thanksgiving, they'll get a Thanksgiving card. If it's a birthday, they get a birthday card. Even if I'm like on vacation, I'll, I'll send a card or a um, uh, what do you call it, a postcard, uh, just constantly dripping on them because it's nice to get stuff in the mail, isn't it? Um, you'll wanna also make sure that you have put timelines and schedule calls on your Outlook calendar so you have proper check-ins, check right? So you're dripping on them um, with a handwritten way, but then also having um, schedule calls because it's, although you want everything to go well, it's not necessarily, um, uh, uh, it, it, it may not, but keeping them up to date 
is a way that you can ensure that you you hopefully will get all of your match, even if you you didn't make it. Um, make sure you stay fired up, um, accentuate the positive, and um, just remember that this opportunity can lead to more in the future. Um, next slide. Um, really important, write it out 90 days, go month to month. I'm not gonna micromanage how you do this. You all know how to do this, but I just wanna remind you, you know, engage your team, um, create a timeline, make sure your finance team is looked over your, your, your wording so you're not actually creating restricted guests and you're creating more general operating guests. They like that a lot. Um, make sure marketing reviews the timeline that they put in your pushes and it aligns and they're on board with everything. Um, you, your executive director's on board and um, uh, as far as board engagement, um, your board is engaged in writing letters and helping you. Um, marketing, volunteers, creative writers, storytellers, you guys can think through that. Um, one of the things that I think is important uh, is uh, really trying to engage volunteers. And I think that is our next slide, isn't it? I'm not sure if we just slide over to the next slide. Yeah, so one of the things that we've done uh, because they're, right? There's so many people and there's so much that you're like, oh my God, this is so much. You guys, we can get interns. We posted a, uh, uh, a development intern position on Work for Good. And uh, I know Crystal's on this call. She's delighted. So we have a brand new intern that's starting and it is going to assist and help with all of these projects. So um, I just wanted to let you know, this is an amazing resource um, for work for good. Um, Louisa, I didn't know if you wanted to chat a little bit about this. I might just be <laughs> winging it here, but love for you to chat. No, no, you're fine. I mean, we can, we, I'll just mention quickly that if you guys don't know, work for good, it's one of our GCN, it's a GCN um, affiliated website. It's workforgood.org. And there you can post volunteer opportunities for free listings. You have um, special pricing for internships, and there's actually some good percent off promos for job listings. So just go to workforgood.org or send an email. We'll have more um, links at the end of the presentation. Um, but thanks, Michelle, for bringing this up. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then finally, um, you know, what's your pitch? Um, is your project LinkedIn worthy? So does it have a business focus? Who on your board is has a great following? You know, get them to, to, to push it out. Um, what is the business case for support? Um, have your executive director write up a piece and put it up. You never know how far the press will get. Quick example, um, Center for Puppetry Arts. We were trying to move our platform to digital. At that, uh, at that point back in March, we had 45,000, which is a lot, I get it, 45,000 um, subscribers to Facebook. An AJC article was printed talking about the Center for Puppetry Arts putting their programs online. It went all across the world, this article. We now have, I think, 67,768 followers. We got like 20,000 followers just from, from, from the press. So make your pride, you never know. We, you know, we're lucky, right? We're lucky, but um, make sure you get, make it excited and ask the press to join you in and on the fun. Um, and then remember, you can send out a press release. Um, you put, make sure to put a great photo um, with the release. Um, uh, make sure it's upbeat, it's exciting and informative. And then also um, you can use uh, videos to, to uh, support. I think one more minute and then I'm almost done. In conclusion, do you love that in summary? <laughs> so double your donation. So in summary, just remember, create your timeline and, and benchmarks, engage your team, make sure you talk to finance, um, make sure that you're working with your uh, marketing volunteers, leverage GCN, and all the wonderful resources they have. If you know the back end of um, Georgia, uh, the, the giving, the, the platform Georgia Gives Day, it's great. There's amazing, amazing tools that you can use. So definitely go to the toolbox kit. Um, and then uh, identify your need, uh, make sure you talk about it and um, just 
have have a great time and just remember the whole the whole project with a matching gift donor it's fun you're going to build brand new relationships um, with your donor and you're just going to create momentum for your organization um, I would love to thank Luis and Emily for helping me today um, put this together. I said I would be done at 1.45, it's 1.50, but we still have 10 minutes. So um, at this point in time, uh, if, are there any questions that anybody has? Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, we're opening up to questions. I don't, I don't see any on the chat just now, but I'm gonna go through some of these resources that we have here to give folks maybe time to put their question in. Um, so Michelle mentioned a few throughout, but here are some of the URLs specifically. So um, most of you should know about georgiagives.org. If you are new and you, you are starting out, that's okay. We have um, the toolkit here that will give you a little bit of an idea of basically how to get started. Everything from, um, you basically start by searching for your org and claiming it. And there's steps on what to do if you need to become the admin for the page. That's the question we get. So check out the toolkit, check out the FAQ. Um, and there's a lot of great resources that we put on the toolkit, including um, different fundraising pages. So as an organization, you can, for example, if you have a matching grant, you can create kind of a page for that and drive folks to it. You can have a team page where, for example, board members compete. Um, there's lots of things to use. So I highly recommend taking a look. And if there's questions, you can reach out to our team at info at georgiagives.org. Um, I do see some questions popping in, so I'm going to read those out to you, Michelle, and you can answer. Um, here is one from Ryan, and he's asking, how would you incorporate a matching grant into a 2.6 million capital campaign, which goes for five new homes and 400K worth of home modeling? Okay. Um, you know, I would actually consider also creating a challenge grant around that. So a matching grant or a challenge grant. But typically with um, a large capital campaign, you usually start with your, your largest donors first, right? Your multi-million dollar donors and there's that pyramid. And then there's the, the, the bottom at the very end of the campaign. So I would say that I think a matching grant program could be really successful when you're looking at identifying those last bit of donors that you need in order to um, reach your $2.6 million goal. It's a great way of getting smaller donors, um, uh, smaller, smaller donors participating in the project. And I don't know if maybe you could connect that to like Georgia Gibbs, for example, like maybe it's like we're, we're this much completed help us get to the finish line and then kind of put that out there to to like your smaller donors with a matching grant, Michelle, would that be a yeah, good idea? Yeah, absolutely. But Ryan, I would definitely not do it unless you have whatever, 90% of that 2.6 million raise because you really want to make sure that um, before you, and I, I don't know who you're with, but before you ever publicly talk about the fact that you have your $2.6 million campaign, you really want to have about, I don't know, 70% of that already baked. Um, so that way you have, and some people say 75% or 80%, it depends. In COVID times, you say 90%. But uh, what you, you really want to have that in the bank. And then you can use this, this uh, extra, extra matching funding um, to help get those smaller donors. But um, it's a timing issue. It's a timing issue. Gotcha. Oh, okay. There's one, one more question here from Erica. She asks, where can you identify grant matching for small schools? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I, I would actually start looking um, at the, your PTA. Um, your PTA, uh, I think that's what they call it now, right? Uh, PTA, Parents, Parents, Parents Association. Um, typically has people who work for corporations that are a part of that. So they could actually, um, they, they might be able to help you. Sometimes with PTAs, and I know um, my daughter used to go 
uh, to a school, an elementary school in and around the Atlanta area, public school, uh, local businesses got excited about doing something because it was a marketing initiative for them in front of the entire elementary school. So let's say, you know, you have all the kindergartens for fifth grade. I don't remember how many people that went there. Let's say it's um, 800 families. That's pretty good for an eye care facility or a local restaurant. So they could actually assist and do a $2,000 grant or a $1,000 grant, but think about it in their mind, that's marketing, right? They get to market it. And then they, once again, remember we talked a little bit about looking like a hero, they'll look like a hero later on. So that would be one of my um, suggestions. My second suggestion on that is just really uh, get the PTA talking about it. And everybody knows somebody who knows somebody that might have a foundation that might be interested in doing it. So whoever has the love and the passion for the kids at that school, um, will be the people that will help you. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. I think we have um, a follow-up question. Um, other than going to your board, how do you find matching grant donors? Are there resources you can point that can point that you can point in the right direction for your cause, or do you just look within your existing database? Um, well, could you say the la that last sentence again? Something about database. What you say? Are there resources that you can point to in the for your cause, or do you just look within your existing database? Well, I mean, there are. It's kind of it's it's a little harder. So, it, it, if people are going to give to your organization, they're going to basically a, a lot of people have influence, affluence, and passion for the organization. So, people that are the most passionate have that probably the highest probability of of giving a match. They they've either have longevity with the organization. So they might not be your donor who's been giving, you know, $1,000 every year for the, for the past, you know, five years or 10 years, but they might be the donor that's giving $250. So um, for a year after year after year, and this might be something that sparks their interest, but I would start, and I know we want to look outside, but I would start by uh, pulling out your list of, donors probably over the past mm, 18 months, um, rank them highest to lowest, meaning how much money that they've given highest to lowest. Uh, look at the person who you believe, you personally believe, because if you're doing the solicitation or you have a board member do the solicitation, but if you're doing the solicitation, have the best connectivity with, and then what you think that they're the most passionate about, um, hopefully it's aligned to the project that you want funded that would be the, the strategy I would uh, use. And then find two or three of them and, you know, get feedback. If it doesn't work, get feedback, you know, retool, retweak, and then go try it again. That's awesome, yeah, that's great. I have one final question. That's the last one I have, if anyone else, ooh, we might have more than one, but um, a similar question in terms of identifying grant for um, a nonprofit that works with underserved or underinvested children, would a PTA still be a valuable starting point? Um, probably not. Um, so, um, but it, but there are, there are, um, organ, maybe it's not a PTA, maybe it's a, a different type of organization that's helping that school. So, um, so, okay. So specifically schools and under, um, invested or underserved, guess who loves that target audience? And those are banks. Banks um, get get points or, or, or uh, um, ratings by helping invest and support their community, and specifically um, supporting underinvested and underserved um, youth. So, if you have any connections with uh, one of your banks, and it doesn't necessarily have to be your typical. Uh, you know, writing to PNC and talking to the major person. It can be a branch, it, depending on how much you want to raise, right? So branches have funding that they can designate and give out to, um, based on the branch manager's relationship. Then there's the like social responsibility and the CSR, uh, uh, corporate social responsibility uh, folks 
at a, a specific bank where you probably would have to go through a grant process, but identify maybe your board members, identify folks that are with banks that could help start or leverage it. Because it, again, it's a marketing opportunity. They'll, they'll, they will uh, look good. And at the end of the day, it meets their um, kind of PDRs that they need to um, hit um, as they, they go throughout the year. Great, and I have one final question here from Kate, and she asks, have you employed services like Double the, Double the Donation or their Match Pro 360 to do employer matching successfully? Mm, that last word, successfully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Have I employed them? Yes. Um, oddly enough, I was, I just, I mean, like two days ago, had an email from Double the Donation um, saying, did I want to renew? So it is only as good as the marketing and the energy you put around it. So if you're just gonna have something just sit there and nobody knows about it and there's no word about it and no excitement about it, it's not gonna be that successful. But if you actually put time and energy around it on a weekly basis, then it will pay off for you. So I would just look at um, you know resources and time um, and um, I mean sometimes the, the 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 best way to do it is really understand your your current donors and um, who who does have matching gifts and then and then pull those and see if there's more people that you can target from that group or that industry in order to expand your your um, your your donors versus um, you know, paying seven hundred and fifty dollars or whatever it is in order to have it on your platform. That's just my. That I'm okay. one person. <laughs> I'm gonna sneak one last one here for Kristen. Shout out to you, Kristen. For an arts organization that has halted live performances due to COVID, are there any strategies to helping promote a matching campaign simply for our annual fund? Hmm, sounds a lot like what, so um, I am currently actively involved in an organization that has halted live performances due to COVID. Um, it is, oh, can you back up that question? Yeah, or, for an or, 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 or maybe I can back it up, I just saw it. Uh, it is, it, it is, it is so timely. So, okay, let's think about this. Um, the end of the year is December, is December 31st. The election is going to be in November. I honestly think we all have between now and November to get our hustle on and go out and get donations coming in. And then if if we're lucky, we'll be able to push them from November to December. But this is the time. It creates energy, um, gets something exciting about the arts organization. So not sure if you guys are, you know, sitting down and creating a think tank that when you do reopen in August, um, next fiscal year, whenever you're gonna reopen, that there's something new and different, um, that you're putting strategies or working on your long range strategy or long range plan. Um, I would try to figure out what's sexy to your donors in that space and then figure out even something that's a, 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 a tight, simple project to, to wrap your arms around and then identify a donor to help leverage that. Great. Thanks so much, um, everybody, for joining. Michelle, thank you so, so much for being here. I've, I know I've learned a lot, and I know um, I, I speak on behalf of others that also learn. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping everybody will get out there, as Michelle mentioned, in the next, you know, gosh, September, October, to get some matching grants out there and make your annual campaigns and hopefully Georgia Give campaign super successful. So thanks, everybody. Again, we'll share slides in the video as they become available. And yeah, happy, happy match, uh, matching. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, everybody. And special thanks to Lisa and Emily. Love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, y'all. Have a good one. Okay, bye. bye.